Hello and welcome to my channel. My last project was quite serious. I made a controller for the robot arm and now I would like to do something fun and interesting. And for me, interesting means something with machine learning. And for this, I'm going to use Nvidia Jetson Nano. Not the Jetson Nano 2 GB, but the regular Jetson Nano, because I have one available. And so the idea is to make a eye, like a human eye, like who? Human eye, but not human eye, but mechanical eye with the camera inside and to make this uh, eye follow some objects, whatever we program. So it could be some uh, objects or maybe I will program face. And to make everything fun, I would like to over-engineer this project. So basically, I would like to move this camera, but with quite powerful motor. So I hope that it's going to be like super fast. But we will see. Let's get started. I have a small Microsoft camera, which I know that it works with the Jetson without any additional driver. And it's connected to my Jetson Nano with Wi-Fi. And this is a keyboard. On the GitHub Jetson inference webpage, you can find the Hello AI World tutorial. And this tutorial is a really cool one for the Jetson. And with this, you can do the image classification, object detection, semantic segmentation, pose estimation, and stuff like this. And this is really well explained and easy to follow. So I did the part for the object detection. And basically with just 10 lines of the code on the Python, you can do some object detection. I used here the model FaceNet. Let's see how it works. And it detects my face. But as you can see, it's not perfect. And also, if I uh, put it somewhere else, it detects also other faces, which are not really faces. And even my face, it detects not with a great confidence. So I don't really like this model. There is also the model uh, MobileNet, which I think works better. But the problem is that it does not detect faces. It detects different objects. So it detects me as a person which could kind of work, but uh, yeah. I would like this eye to look at your face, not just at you. As you can see, it works. It's not perfect, but uh, I think uh, in the worst case scenario, if I would not find a better model than this, we can work with this one. Maybe I will try pose estimation like this, where we can detect really eyes and the position of the eyes. This could be quite interesting. Yeah, we'll see this later. Now let's talk about mechanics. As I told you, I'm going to do kind of overkill. And in order to move this light camera, I'm going to use this powerful motor. Actually, I'm going to use two motors for the pan and tilt. This is AeroDrive 4250, 350 kV, quite powerful motor. And in order to increase the torque of this motor, I'm going to use a planetary gearbox. I have one planetary gearbox with a reduction of 20 and another planetary gearbox with a reduction of 15. So it's going something like this. And afterwards, I need to do something over here in order to connect other parts of our uh, structure. And for this, I'm going to use this pulley, which uh, is not really pulley here, but here I'm going to use it like a shaft where I made uh, several holes, six holes with the thread M3. And this is going over here. And this is going to be quite powerful pan and tilt system. And I hope that with all this power, we'll be able to move our camera really quickly. But we'll see this. Now from all of this, we need to make an actuator, meaning that we need to make a one package with the motor, with the encoder and with the gearbox. For this, I already 3D printed a couple of pieces. Let me show you. And bearing. I think for the moment it's hard to understand how it's going to look like, but you will see this. Just wait a minute. As I told you, in this project, I'm going to use Jetson Nano from the company NVIDIA. And using this module, you can add machine learning or AI to your robotics project. I think machine learning in the robotics is the best combination you can ever imagine. <laughs> in order to understand what happens now in the AI and uh, what technology now can do, what you can do, you can register to the conference and attend this conference. Like this, you can watch different sessions and find out the uh, best of the best of the AI and uh, how to use it in robotics. And one of these conference is coming really, really soon, just in a couple of weeks. The name of this conference is GTC 22. GTC stands for the GPU Technology Conference. This is a conference which is made by NVIDIA. So the conference starts on the 21st of March. And the keynote of this conference is going to be on the 22nd of March. 
And the interesting thing is that this conference is for the beginners and for the professionals. So if you know nothing, you can, for example, follow this session, getting started with HAI on Jetson. And this session will explain you how to use Jetson Nano or other Jetson boards and what you can do with them. I already know a little bit how to use Jetson Nano, but still I'm going to attend this session because I'm pretty sure that I'm going to learn something new. And also, if you are professional in machine learning and AI, you still can find a lot of interesting stuff there because there are a lot and a lot of sessions. For example, another session which I would like to attend is object manipulation without explicit models. This sounds like perfect for the robotic arm. So register to this conference using my link in the description. And if you would do this, you have a chance to win a graphics card, a powerful graphics card, RTX 3080 Ti. There are five conditions for this raffle. First of all, you need to be from Europe, Middle East or Africa, EMEA countries. Second, you need to register to this conference using my link in the description. Third point, you need to attend the keynote session. Fourth point, you need to attend some other sessions. And the last point, be subscriber of my channel. And I should say that my channel is small. From this channel, only small part of my channel are going to participate in this raffle. So this is going to be quite small group of people. So you have a really high chance to win this graphics card. But in my opinion, this conference is interesting even without this raffle. On this blue part, I have installed the motor over here. Also, I have installed the gear for the planetary reduction. And on this side, I will install the encoder with the magnet. And now over here, I will install this piece. This is a limiter, which will limit the motion of rotation. And the gearbox goes here. I already put the screws for the gearbox. Like this, they hold the nuts and the nuts are not going to fall. The limiter is installed, the gearbox is installed, and the next is this piece, which is going to hold the bearing, this one. And after over here, I will install this pulley, which is not really a pulley, but kind of a shaft coupler. And afterwards, our load we're going to fix with these six holes. Bearing goes here, seems fine. On the gearbox, I need to take off this label. Otherwise, this piece would not fit. Yeah, it's a tight fit, actually. Right. And four screws to fix it. This output shaft coupler is fixed. Everything works fine. We can back drive it. This bearing is uh, to help to support the load. I think it's quite important over here. Our load is not really heavy, so I don't need to put any thrust bearing here. The normal ball bearings is enough. Now this piece will go over here on top. But before I need to install the embedded nuts. And after when we will install it, to fix the bearing, we will put the screws through these holes. And like this, these screws are going to hold this bearing. This is how it will look inside when we will install it over there. This part is a little bit tricky to install, but it's doable. All the nuts over there on their places. And just we need to put the screws inside. And now it already looks quite cool. Just to show you the range, I will put the output shaft to the limit from one side. Let's put here this Allen key. And so this Allen key is in front of the wires. And we go to another limit. Yes, so you see it's almost one turn. This is a range where we cannot go. I need to limit the motion in order not to break my cables. As a next step, we need to take care of the encoder. To fix the magnet, we're going to use this 3D printed piece. This is the magnet itself. It's 6 by 2.5 millimeters. It's a standard magnet which comes with my encoder. And it's just press fitted inside. Afterwards, this piece goes at the back of the motor. And we fix it with the three screws, one, two, three. The encoder is going to be fixed on this plate and this plate will go here. As you can see, the tolerances here are quite tight, but it still rotates without any friction. And all this in order to make the magnet as close to the encoder as possible. And this is our encoder installed. This is a S5047P encoder. It's configured for 3.3 volts, the voltage which is required for the O-drive. So this piece goes over here. We need uh, to put the screws, but before putting the screws, we need to put the embedded nuts.
Ta-da! I think our actuator is ready. There is no any sound of friction. So this is a good sign. And we need two axes, the pitch and roll. And we also need two actuators. So this is one. And this is the second one. Exactly the same. The only difference in the gear reduction. This one has the gearbox of 15 and this one has the gearbox of 20. It's because I had two gearboxes like this laying around. And so the more powerful, so the higher reduction ratio is going to be in the base and the lower reduction ratio is going to be not in the base. And as we're talking about the base, I already prepared one. It does not fit. And the motor will be fixed like this. So the base, it's an overkill. It's the base from the other project. So it should be enough for this one. Here there is a hole for the M3 screws. This actuator has the matching holes and the places for the embedded nuts. By the way, yellow parts are 3D printed from PLA and blue parts are 3D printed from PETG. It's not really necessary to use PETG, but I think it's good to use the PETG close to the motor. So all the parts which are touching the motor, they are made out of PETG. The next actuator should be mounted at 90 degrees. And in order to do this, I have 3D printed this arm. And it has a huge channel over here in order to pass all the cables. And this channel is so huge in order to pass the USB connector from the camera. So this piece goes here. On the side of it, we will put the second actuator. And this is what I have made. So I fixed the actuator on this arm. And also I passed all the cables, including the cable from the camera. And now this piece goes here. Cool! <laughs> now we need to find a way how to fix this camera at the output. For this I'm going to use this huge 3D printed ball, which is going to look like an eye. So it's going over here and the camera will be placed over here. It <laughs> looks kind of cool. Yeah! <laughs> For the back I 3D printed this piece which will just cover it. And for the front, I 3D printed this blue piece, which will hold our camera. It already looks like an eye. On this camera, I don't need any more this leg. In order to mount the camera, I have made here this kind of cutout, where I also put a screw over here and not from this side. So when I'm going to tighten this screw, this piece is going to squeeze our camera. And here there is a channel to put a zip tie in order to release the stress from the cable. Now everything is fixed. Oh, look at this beauty. There are embedded nuts which I put on the other side inside this ball. And so these screws, they hold on these nuts. And over here, this piece. This is so cool. You see this entire ball, it holds only on this side with these screws and it's still quite stable and I think this is thanks to this additional bearing which I added in the actuator. And also this one is quite stable. The most oscillation comes actually from the frame and from my table because my table is not stable. I really want to see it in action. By the way, these actuators are going to be controlled with the O-Drive. As you know, O-Drive can drive two motors at the same time, so one O-Drive is enough for this system. There is a backlash of course in these actuators. More precisely this is backlash in the gearboxes. But I think for this application it should be perfect. Ha! I love it. Let's check if the camera is still working because I was quite aggressive with the cable and uh, yeah, there is a small but still chance that I broke this cable. Let's check this. 
Yeah, it's still working. Nice. Cool. And I love the mechanics. It looks quite solid. Everything works as supposed to. I just need to make a cable management. Uh, but up to now it's really promising. I don't want to make this video too long. That's why I'm going to split it on the two parts. And this is the end of the part number one where we finished all the mechanics. And we also tested our camera. We saw that it works uh, with the Jetson Nana and we tried some machine learning models. Probably I'm going to use another machine learning model. I think I will try the post estimation because like this you can detect the left eye and the right eye and like this you can point your camera somewhere in between. So in the next second video I'm going to finish the wiring. Uh, this should be quite simple and afterwards I am going to do the programming which should not be too complicated I think. And in order not to miss this part please subscribe to my channel. As usual, huge thank you goes to the people who support me via Patreon and via YouTube channel membership. Here are their names. Thanks to these people I can do this kind of project. And thanks to these people this channel is still existing. As usual, stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time.